Hello. Moving to the rhythm. When we look at a dancer, there's almost something inhumanly beautiful about a dancer who's incredibly well timed to a beat. That person understands when to hit the rhythm, and we human beings being rhythmic creatures can typically feel it. We can see and feel the skill emanate off the simplest moves in combination with their soul innately. We ourselves are moved by another's ability to precisely move themselves to the music. The most beautiful dancers don't try to calculate themselves to perfectly hit a beat because it just doesn't feel real when we watch it. There's just something off about it. They simply feel it and hit it through that feeling as if the music brought those moves to life. The same feeling we use to hit a beat can be used to read an opponent, but instead, the opponent's weight distribution from lead foot to back foot becomes the music, the rhythm, and you, the dancer, trying to precisely time yourself to hit that rhythm, vice versa. You don't try to figure it out in your head like a math problem, you feel it. And slowly, the same way you time yourself to a beat, you time yourself to hit your opponent's rhythm, striking them the moment they fall into their rhythm as Connor did here, instantly stifling Aldo the moment he was about to fall into rhythm. You see that? The moment Aldo runs in, he's about to fall into rhythm and he just instantly gets stifled. Or reacting and countering breaks in rhythm. Not only did he observe the right, but the moment he broke out of his rhythm, Connor felt that instantly. The exact definition is the rate at which one cycles their weight from lead foot to back foot. And as you can tell, Aldo's rhythm is inhumanly fast, which is part of the reason why his opponents for the most part can't keep up with him. They get overwhelmed trying to feel him out, but because Connor has a boxing background, and because he's dedicated so much time to visualizing and feeling all those patterns of movement, that music and the time to hit became a clear read. In essence, the understanding is a tool we use to read and exploit cyclic, habitual weight distribution in movement, using the knowledge you gain through feeling to improve the timing, thus increase the precision of your strike. Understanding rhythm is a valuable tool in boxing, but its utilization isn't seen as much in MMA. Why is that? Because knowledge. Literally, this is not some Tai Lopez speech. At the end of the day, understanding rhythm is utilizing a tool to exploit knowledge attained through feeling. But there are so many ways to attain and exploit knowledge in MMA that some methods and understanding simply get lost. Learning to mend a hole in your game can be a full-time job, like a takedown defense or a jiu-jitsu submission. And getting lost in those other methods can neglect a textbook boxing one. But nonetheless, that fighter can still be very successful at what they do. Damian Maya, who's basically pure jiu-jitsu and MMA, incredibly successful at what he does, and doesn't need to focus as much on cyclic weight distribution because his focus is turning the match into a game of chess on the ground. Jiu-Jitsu is just as deep as boxing with completely different understandings in play. And so one can literally spend their entire life trying to master that and completely neglect textbook fundamentals of boxing. But if we are to look at fighters who do read rhythm at a very high level in MMA, Leo Tomachita, Anderson Silva, and Conor McGregor, you can see them feeling their opponent's movements, thus their rhythm, and timing their attacks to patterns their opponents habitually fall into, or countering the breaks of their opponent's rhythm. This partly explains why their counters are so clean and their ability to just know when to strike is so freaking precise. They all have this in common. They're exploiting a knowledge advantage by reading rhythm. So understanding all of this, it's safe to say that we are all music habitually patterning through movements and our opponent is trying to dance to us, timing themselves to hit a beat. The more easily we fall into one rhythm of cyclic weight distribution, the easier it is for an opponent to feel and time themselves against that rhythm. There are multiple things that can be done against this. Jose Aldo was incredibly successful by having an insanely, inhumanly fast rhythm, just being too fast for the average human being to catch up with. 
you know, basically hypnotizing them. Michael Venom Page literally mixes random dance moves into his movements, making reading him incredibly annoying and difficult. Or we can take a philosophy similar to that by just having a varying cadence or tempo to our rhythm, you know, cycling through different rhythms. It's also possible, if you know your opponent is actively reading you, to bait through your rhythm, breaking out of it part way, and then countering them. But that is definitely next level. Definitely used in a Floyd Mayweather situation, but not really seen in mixed martial arts, because there's just so much more you can learn. It's not really a focus, except with a few very high level guys. It is also important to note that dance cultures appear to have a higher concentration of high level strikers, perhaps because they grow up in an environment where using their bodies to hit a rhythm is just a part of life. And so to that end, let's conclude this video. I'll leave attack rhythm for another day and I hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. It's good karma. And until next time, peace.